Good evening, everybody. Um, I just wanted to bring something out that the Lord had revealed to me um, this evening. So I was kind of feeling, you know, just a little overworked, um, a little overwhelmed. And so I've been going through the Bible this year. It's only 20 days into the year. And um, I'm reading... I'm supposed to read three chapters in the Old Testament, one Psalm, one Proverb, which means I go through Proverbs every month, and then one chapter in the Old Testament. Now with the, I mean, New Testament. Now with the Old Testament, I'm like super far ahead because it's like, there's so much in the um, Old Testament. It's like a book. And I know some people are like, you know, oh, if you read through the whole Bible, in one year, you're not retaining anything, you don't know anything, and this, this, and that. And I've been saved for quite some time now, and I'm learning that the Holy Spirit will bring all things to your remembrance. You know, it's our job to read the Word and meditate on the Word. Do I think about the Word throughout the day? Yes. Do I think about those chapters that I read throughout the day? Yes. Do I try to pick, you know, different things that stand out to me? Absolutely. And so that's why tonight I'm on here, because I just kind of felt... A little heavy kind of like you know when Saul was sent that tormenting spirit and so you know sometimes you just have to praise your way through different things and you have to take heed to when your leaders tell you certain things like I know my pastor had been telling us lately like we can't share everything with everybody and it was one thing that I was sharing when I was you know consecrating and fasting in my fasting and praying prayer time um, I heard God tell me that he was going to do a thing that I had been asking him to do. And so it was like the enemy in the Garden of Eden when God told Adam, do not eat of the forbidden fruit. Well, the, the snake, the serpent went to Eve and he asked her, did God really say you couldn't? Um, eat the fruit and she said yeah God said that we could not touch or eat the fruit but God didn't tell her that he told Adam that he couldn't eat the fruit so at that point in time he knew that he got to her because it's like you don't even know everything that he said because now you're adding stuff and you know you're not sure and so um, I had an individual and I'm sure this person didn't mean no harm I'm sure many people do this a lot and they really don't mean no harm but they asked me, you know, did God really tell you that he was going to do such and such? And it kind of made me doubt, thinking to myself, like, man, did he say that? Did I hear from him? Is he not going to do it? You know, I know that the situation looks pretty bad, but everything is a season. Everything has a season and everything has a, a timing of what's going to happen. And so um, just kind of feeling like overworked, overwhelmed. I'm um, starting some new projects. Um even new positions and different things like that. I'm trying to get my, you know, my life to, together, mine together, even for this year of what God wants me to do. I don't want to just jump in things no more just because somebody is telling me to. You know, I just want to be, I want to hear from God. I want to walk in purpose. I want to walk in, in influence. And I know that lately, even I feel like just not all areas, but certain areas I slack more in. And so I'm going to God and I'm trying to, you know, have a plan like, okay, God, what can I do to do this? What can I do to do that? It's been some shifts and some changes, um, even like with different things at church or whatever. So I'm just kind of like trying to figure out what it is that God want me to do. And I just jump into something to later figure out that this is not a good fit for me um, because everybody don't, you know, everybody is not always receptive to you know change or your change or you're not accepted to some receptive to someone else's change so we always have to be in tune with what god is telling us um especially in these last evil days because so many people get offended and get frustrated you know and it's like you know it's not always cause for offense and frustration i mean my dad used to tell me all the time to take the meat and throw out the bones so even if something comes across where you feel like it's said to you, it's like, take the meat and spit out the bones because, you know, we we can hear from God. You know, if we really get in tune, God will speak to us. Sometimes we get discouraged. And I say all of that to bring you to, to Matthew 20 
which um, kind of does not go with everything I just said. It's I'm talking about the parable of the workers in the vineyard. Um, so let's just just read it. I'm going to read it in the NIV version. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in the vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarii for the day and sent them into his vineyard. And that, while I'm thinking about this, I also want to add, have you ever felt like you were doing so much in a relationship or in um, work or school or just anything like with your children, you know, in a marriage, anything? Like, do you ever feel like, man, like I'm carrying the weight for me, this person, this person, and all these other people? Well, that's why I want to bring this to your attention tonight. So let me finish reading. About the third hour, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did the same thing. About the eleventh hour, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning from the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers were higher about the 11th hour. The workers were higher about the 11th hour came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first they expected to receive more but each of them also received a denarius when they received it they began to grumble against the, the landowner these men who were hired last worked only one hour and they said and they said and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day but he answered one of them friend i am not being unfair to you didn't you agree to work for Denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. And I just read to your hearing Matthew 20 from the 1st to the 14th verse. When I read this, I used to think to myself about certain situations in my life. Like, you know, here I am. I'm working hard. I'm taking care of my children. I'm doing different things that God has called me to do. And somebody else is reaping the benefits of the labor and the, the, the all the hard work that I'm putting into something. And I just think to myself, like, Lord, you know, it's sometimes that gets frustrating for you or whatever. And then you hear God say, you know, I'm going to switch this thing. I'm going to turn this thing around. You know, this person is going to do this. This person is going to be blessed. And it's like you didn't did all this fasting, all this laboring, all this toiling for somebody else to reap the benefits. But then saints i just want people to be encouraged today because jesus did the same thing he got up on that cross and he died for us he was stabbed in the side with a spear they put crowny thorns in his head and i know that we all kind of teach these same messages but the last will be first and the first will be last like my pastor always say the kingdom is a paradox so we have to know that all of this labor we're doing, all this praying, all this fasting, you know, we say that we are the hands and the feet of Jesus. We need to be just that. We need to go out and be ambassadors for Christ. When it, we have lost siblings in Christ out there, it's people out there, we're saying, oh, that's not my brother, that's not my sister, why not? Why not? Because it takes them longer to come, because they're still standing out there at the 11th hour. Because we're we're in here toiling and we running for our lives while they out there playing, slapping high fives, going out, doing whatever they want to do. But guess what? I used to be one of them. So who am I to put my mouth on them? I should be praying for them. I should be praying that my family members are not turned over to a reprobate mind. I should be praying for those lost loved ones that God told me he was going to save and deliver them. And they're going to be so blessed. It's going to be beyond the things that I can ever imagine or think. But at the same time, it's going to take some laboring and some toiling on my part. But I agree to this. I agree to this walk with Christ. This is what I already agreed to. And this is basically what I get from this when he's talking about, hey, I agreed to pay you one denarius that's what you that's that was our agreement just because you see somebody else 
you know, being blessed and oh, you, um, you know, you go in your prayer closet and you intercede. You're not the big person at church that's on the stage able to sing. Your voice is not gifted for that stuff. Okay, that's fine. You know, you in the back um, selling coffee and stuff like that. Okay, that's fine. You know, but we all have our part in the ministry and it's okay to 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 see God for what it is that you want that you, that God wants you to do versus jumping out there and doing different things because whatever you do you really do want to enjoy it like I know that pastoring probably is not the easiest thing at times but I know that a lot of people take delight in what they're doing you know like they enjoy what they're doing in the ministry they enjoy what they're doing you know, even like when they're um, interceding and different things like that. And sometimes it is a burden. Sometimes you get up at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, and you're fasting, you're interceding, you pushing that plate away. I, I, I had a time where the Lord had me um, fasting and oh my goodness, I was cooking for my family every single day, several times a day. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like I'm, I'm, I'm starving. Like my stomach is making all of these noises. And I'm just thinking to myself, every time I would think, okay, I'm just going to break. I'm just going to eat. I want to look at my children. I'm like, they have to be saved. I would think about lost loved ones. And I'm like, they have to be saved. They, this stuff has to be broken. These curses and these cycles cannot keep following us. These, this, this, this mindset of poverty, poverty and selfishness. I was, the Lord put it on my heart today. I, he's been really um, blessing us financially. Um, and it's crazy because it's like you see it, but you don't see it. Like you, you see it when you doing paying your bills and stuff, but then you're like, wait, where's all this money coming from? And so today I was um, looking online, shopping. I'm not gonna lie, and um, the Lord is like, what do you do with the blessings that I give you? Who do you bless with it? How many people you know that's hungry right now? How many people you know that's struggling right now? Their, their own kids, and you talk to these people, but, but what are you doing to help them? You know, is it because of a broken and, you know, having a broken heart that you feel like you can't help the next person? You feel like you can't be a shoulder? You know, you always want to call out and vent to somebody? Put yourself on the back burner and walk in that selfless mindset, that selfless spirit. Be loving, be kind to people. You know, somebody labor with me in my salvation. I, I, I repented and gave my life to Christ in 2011, 2011 in November. And it was a struggle. It was such a struggle. I had lost everything. I lost, I lost everything, my apartment, everything. And, um, I would get so frustrated. I would, I would tell the, the, the gentleman that was helping me at the time. Um, he was like a genuine person. He was like, a. I would just get mad. Like, I can't do this. I can't. I'm like, I, I, I don't have nothing. I'm homeless. I need a place to stay. You know, I don't want to sleep in my van. I got these kids. It was so frustrating. And he would tell me something. He would tell me sometimes I don't even have the words, but I know God will make a way. And tr sure enough, I went from having nothing to living in one of the best parts in the St. Louis region area. You know, and it's all God. It's not me. It's not me at all. You know, and I and I thank God for where he where he's brought me from, because just like that, even though in my mind, I'm like, OK, Lord, you said the first will be last. I was last. I was last. I was the black sheep. I was counted out. But God saw purpose in me. There's purpose in each and every one of us. Nobody is by mistake. People may have got together and made children not doing what they were supposed to do. And they, you know, weren't married. They weren't living for God. But when that child was conceived, God knew that that child was coming. He had already, their life was already predestined. He had already went before them to make the way for them. You know, so we don't, don't call children mistakes either. You know, we are not mistakes. So you have a purpose. I have a purpose. We all have a calling. Let's repent. Let's get our lives back right with God. Let's talk about the kingdom of God. Jesus came into this world to bring the Holy Ghost back to us that we may have life in him, that we may have relationship with God, that we may talk to him. That's why he said, don't you speak against the Holy Ghost. Don't you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Don't do that because he is the one that's going to lead you and guide you back to Jesus. Jesus is going to cleanse you and wash you up and then present you to God as faultless because he already paid the price for that. He already paid the price. 
Just like you may be paying a price for a loved one that's just so wayward and just don't want to do right. I understand. I'm telling you. But at the same time, somebody did it for us. Somebody did it for us. The parable of the workers in the vineyard. These people were working all day and then the person, the last few people come and they're like, man, you paying them the same thing. That's okay. That's okay. Great is our reward in heaven. Seek ye first his kingdom. Think about his kingdom. Think about your mansion in heaven. You know, I know it seemed like, man, like that's that's so far away. I'm only 20. You know, I don't think, I don't think I'm dying until I'm 107. Whatever. You know, Jesus died completely um, emptied of everything he needed to do. He said it was finished. He was 33 and a half. So you don't know when your time is. You don't know how many months, how many days you got. But you got a certain amount of time to do the work that God is calling you to do. Don't waste your time. It's not time to waste time in these last and evil days. It's time to get busy and get right with God and get consistent and just and be fruitful in the kingdom of God. When you get that extra money, you sow into people's life. Don't get me wrong. You save. You put money to the side for yourself to enjoy different things. But you sow into people's life when you get those blessings. You know, I know I, my pastor had told us, um, you know, that, you know, you, you tithe on your taxes all throughout the year. So when you give it, you know, your taxes or whatever, it's an offering. And even when, you know, some people get school money and stuff and they tithe off of that, you know, but if it's a loan, you're meant to pay it back or whatever. So I, you know, I just noticed that, you know, for me, I just, I just go where the Lord leads me. You know, I just plant seeds where God tells me to plant them and do what he, he's telling me to do. But I just want everybody um, to be encouraged in that and, you know, to, to to be a blessing to people, to give to people, to sow into people's lives. Don't be so selfish in your thinking and in, and in giving and what God has given you because he will give you back. Like I said, don't be foolish. Be wise. Be very wise in spending. Um, but just, you know, just hear the voice of God. You know, hear the voice of God and just be faithful in him. I don't want to keep going going because i know we can kind of get off track but i just wanted to encourage somebody with that your labor is not in vain be unmovable and unshakable be stable in your ways be consistent and fervent in prayer and don't share everything with everybody people may have your best interest in heart and they just like you know what this person need to leave they just need to move out of the way but god when god is telling you something the first will be last and the last will be first the people that was counted out are the ones that god used the most because they know what it's like to not to not be loved and not be wanted. They they got that humbleness since with them. You know, so I just want to encourage you lovely men and women tonight, be blessed, be encouraged, you know, repent, give your life to Christ if you haven't. Call on him as your Lord and your savior. R let go of that 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 old man, walk in holiness, walk in truth. Don't walk and conform to this world. People will tell you, oh, you can do this, you can do that. It's a lie. There's laws and precepts in the things of God that cover us and protect us when we follow them. That's a different topic. But I love you guys. Continue to be blessed. Amen.